Hi folks, welcome to this video where we cover the concept of Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands or BBs are widely used to understand the volatility in the stock price movement. If you can now recollect in all the other indicators that we have covered so far, we talk about the price action and the strength of the movement of price. But if we want to get a sneak peek on the volatility of the stock price movement, Bollinger Bands can be a very good indicator. As I had covered in one of our previous videos, whenever a car is in full speed, if it wants to take a U-turn, it will have to bring down the gear and reduce the speed, which means a period of high speed will be followed by a period of low speed whenever the trend is changing or whenever the course of action is changing. Likewise. In case of stock prices also, a period of high volatility or a speedy movement will typically be followed by a period of low volatility or a squeeze in the volatility. So this is what Bollinger Band essentially try to convey. So without much ado, let's talk further about Bollinger Bands. So Bollinger Bands can help us identify potential breakout zones in stock price action. And Bollinger Bands also act as a support and resistance zone for the stock price. By providing a view on the volatility of the stock price movement over a given period, Bollinger Bands will help us understand potential breakouts and generate buy or sell signals for us. A Bollinger Band typically comprises of three components, the upper band, the lower band and the midline. The midline is a 20 period simple moving average and the upper band and lower band are two sigma points from the price. Two sigma knots on the upper side and two sigma knots on the lower side. However, since our charting platforms already compute these values for us, we need not get into the details of what these values are and how they are calculated. What is more important is to understand how to interpret these values. So before we look into some chart examples to understand how we can use Bollinger Bands for our advantage, let's look at some theoretical concepts around Bollinger Bands. So as you can see on my screen, Bollinger Bands provide insight on the volatility change and it is derived from the prices because if you remember, the two standard deviation up and down will be with respect to the price. It will not give you the overall trend, the SMA line or the midline is what will give you an indication of the overall trend. That is why the midline or the 20 simple moving average is a very crucial component of the Bollinger Band. As I mentioned, a period of low volatility will typically be followed by a period of high volatility and vice versa. And whenever your Bollinger Bands are squeezed or whenever the bands are getting narrow, that would mean that the volatility is reducing and there can be a good trading opportunity in the cards. So whenever you identify stocks which have a squeezed Bollinger Band or which has a very narrow Bollinger Band width, these stocks can be tracked for potential trading opportunities and potential breakout opportunities as well. So let's understand this further by looking at a few examples, post which I will help you understand how we can plot Bollinger Bands on charting platforms. If you remember the chart that I have on my screen, we had covered this example when we were discussing the concept of RSI. So on the same chart, now I have overlaid the Bollinger Band as you see on the next slide. So if you notice here, the stock was in a visible uptrend and in this section which I am highlighting, the band was very narrow and when the prices moved out of this band, the prices gave a phenomenal up move from a 600 odd level to a 1100 odd level. If you notice further carefully, the upper line or the upper shadow is the upper band of the Bollinger Band and the lower line or the lower shadow is the lower band of the Bollinger Band. And the red line in between is the 20 period simple moving average. In this context, it is the 20 week simple moving average line. Also, if we plot another indicator to identify what is the width of the Bollinger Band, that is known as a Bollinger Band Width Indicator, which will simply take the width of the Bollinger Band and plot it in the form of a line. So 
so whenever the bollinger band width line is peaking up it means that the band is wide and whenever it is going down and it is forming a bottom it means that the band width is very narrow so this will help you get a very clear picture on how the bollinger band width is and whether it is on the narrow end or whether it is on the wide end remember when the bands are squeezed or narrow trading opportunities will come it will follow the concept of bollinger band width is not only limited to identifying the squeezed portion of the bollinger band it will also help you identify back testing if you remember in the initial videos we talked about the premises of technical analysis where we covered how history repeats itself so if you notice i have drawn two dotted lines here which is trying to signify what is the zone within which the bollinger band width is fluctuating whenever the bollinger band width is on the higher side the stock normally gets corrected because a period of high volatility as indicated by the bollinger band width being high will be followed by a period of low volatility similarly whenever the bollinger band width is on the lower side implying a squeezed or a narrow band you would typically see that the price has given a good price action a good uptrend as indicated by this particular line that i have drawn here so the price did give a very good move and it gave a very good trading opportunity so what is important is for us to understand how to read the bollinger band and how to draw insights around the volatility of the stock price movement because the other indicators typically do not give a picture of the volatility of the stock price movement and whenever the price is trying to cross the upper or the lower band you would be able to expect a very good move in the same direction like if you see here when the price crossed the upper band it gave a phenomenal up move and similarly whenever the price crosses the lower band it will give you a phenomenal down move as well so folks i hope bollinger bands is now clear to you and you would be able to draw insights in terms of the stock price volatility let's now understand how we plot in this indicator in a normal charting plan so let me now log in to tv.dhan.co which will provide me with these indicators and let me show you how to bring in these indicators in our chart So on my screen as you can see I have the chart of Fortis Healthcare on a daily time frame let me move it to a candlestick chart pattern let me make it a weekly chart because technicals as i mentioned when applied on a higher time frame chart holds more significance as compared to a lower time frame chart and uh, let me adjust the scale of the chart <clears throat> let me remove all the other indicators that we have and let me simply plot the bollinger band and the bollinger band width so i go to my option for indicators and i can type either bb or i can type bollinger band as well and then i can also click this option for bollinger band width now if you notice the typical setting for bollinger band is 2 that is 2 standard deviation point and 20 simple moving average here if you see the stock price was in a consolidation phase and when the price did break out of the bollinger band upper band it gave a phenomenal up move and that is also visible because your bollinger band width was almost at the lowest end or the bottom end and whenever the bollinger band width is on the higher side it indicates a period of increased volatility or a wide band that is where it is very difficult to identify trades So as I always say don't rush into taking trades wait for the right opportunity and to identify the right opportunity you need to follow charts so you need to have patience and discipline and perseverance to get the right trading opportunity and to make the most out of it so folks stay tuned in our next video we'll cover fibonacci retracement which is a very interesting topic to predict the retracement levels and to identify support and resistance zones thank you